Are pushmatic panels a fire hazard, or are they just old technology? Unlike modern breakers, they don't always disconnect when they should. Electricians in the field have seen that when they fail, they overheat and sometimes arc because they don't break the circuit quickly, and that's what makes them dangerous. One big reason they fail is that they rely on this internal grease to work properly. And when these panels were sold brand new, the instructions said to exercise the breakers once a year. That means to flip them on and off a few times a year. But seriously, is anyone doing that? My panel's 75 years old. I can guarantee it didn't get cycled every year. So after decades of sitting untouched, the grease hardens. That causes the mechanisms to stick. The breaker still might trip, but it might not reset afterwards, or worse, it might get stuck in the on position. And when you think a breaker's off and there's actually power on it, that's super dangerous. And here's the thing, the early models that have the Bulldog Pushmatic, they have no magnetic trip, and they only rely on heat to make it trip. And that's super dangerous too. Because in a short circuit, instead of tripping instantly, they will heat up slowly, and this gives it time to melt wires or even start a fire. But here's the thing, if you have Pushmatic breakers, maybe there's still life in them. Maybe they'll still work. Talk to a local electrician to see if now is the time to do an upgrade. Maybe you can wait a bit longer. Okay, so let's say you keep your panel, and what if a breaker fails? How do you replace it? Maybe you could buy some new ones online, but otherwise you're going to have to go searching on eBay and buy a used one. And I've seen some selling for over $100 just for a single used breaker. And who really wants to have antique breakers in their panel? They should be in a museum. It belongs in a museum. It belongs in a museum. Another reason to do this upgrade is if you're trying to sell your house, some inspectors will fail the inspection because of these Pushmatic panels. So maybe it's time for an upgrade. Put that thing in a museum. All right, let's go outside and take a look at the new panel. All right, we just bought a new house. Uh, it was built in 1950. There are a bunch of upgrades to do. The new Pushmatic panel was kind of the first thing we did because we had to replace that to do all these other things. Uh, we want to add solar, battery backup, uh, generator connection, uh, new electric appliances. There's tons of stuff that we want to do. Uh, I'm going to do a series of videos um, about those upgrades uh, over the next few months, uh, or honestly, like years, because this stuff takes a while and we have to save up money. So eventually, we want to electrify everything. Uh, switching from gas to electric for the stove, uh, the heat pump, hot water heater, and eventually maybe a heat pump furnace. So hopefully this gives you some ideas of how and why to make upgrades onto your house. So first up, today, we're going to be replacing the Pushmatic panel. We're also going to be adding a new service panel out by the meter on the outside. And all of this is to get ready to have a fully electric home and be ready for solar and batteries as well. So even if you're not going fully electric at your house, replacing a Pushmatic panel is still a good idea for safety and reliability, for resale value, and just peace of mind. All right, let's go check out the panel and learn some more. So right here, we have an overhead line coming in from the utility pole, coming into here, coming down into the panel. This is the utility meter. And then from here, we go into the main panel. We have the grid connection here and the generator connection here. And what's great about this, I can shut off the power to the whole house here. But what I can also do is I have a generator connection here. When I plug in down here, this port actually has a male connection here. And then I get a plug as a female connection at the end of a cable. I, um, that plugs in here and the other end of the cord goes to the generator. So then what I can do is once that's connected and the generator is running, if the grid was out and there's no power anyways, I would turn this off and then move this thing up and turn this circuit breaker on. And this metal bracket basically means I can't backfeed the grid when the generator's on, which is just a smart thing to do. Um, the other thing I have here is a whole house surge protector. You can see the green light there. Uh, so that means everything's working good. What happened in my old house is I didn't have this and a huge transformer exploded or something nearby and the power went out for a few days and it fried a bunch of stuff at our house. So dimmer switches, LED lights, uh, a bunch of things like that just stopped working. And I didn't really know why. And I realized that it happened right after that power outage. So I'm pretty sure I got a surge. Um, so happy to have this out here, you know, way up upstream close to the uh, power coming in. 
And then I have an extra breaker here for when I eventually do solar or a solar battery system. I have a additional one here just in case I want to put a power meter up here, either here or down at the panel downstairs. Here's the new electrical panel. And the number one thing when replacing your main panel that I'd recommend is always go to a 200 amp panel. Some people, if they're replacing a 100 amp panel, um, they think, oh, 150 amps is fine. I have a small house. But the cost between a 150 amp and a 200 amp uh, is very small. And this panel is going to last you a few decades. And even if you don't think you're going to electrify everything now, we might be electrifying most appliances in our house in the future and adding EVs. Who knows? You might have two EVs in the future. So it's smart to just go to a 200 amp panel. Also, with a 200 amp panel, you'll have extra breaker spaces so you won't run out. Before this, we had the Pushmatic. Uh, now we have kind of the standard breakers. Um, got everything in there. Got plenty of room for new appliances so I can electrify the house. The old meter connection was right there. So if you see this new um, gray cable, we actually had to connect that up to the outside back over there. Brought that back in over here, connecting up all the old circuits. Here's the power meter I'm going to add. Um, I need to put on some of the circuit breakers there and then some of these uh, CTs or the current transducers, basically just a clamp meter that can measure the current put these around the, the main wires coming in. This measures the current. And then I'll have two of these for each line coming in for split phase. I have two circuit breakers that will then measure the voltage coming in. So then voltage times current, you have the power being used. Uh, so then I'll know the power at the meter. I can use that with an EMS to then control what the battery inverter does. So if I happen to have solar producing power but I'm using energy at the house, There's, it'll know the difference between the two. And then if energy is really expensive, I can have the battery uh, discharge. So then I'm using less energy from the grid when it's expensive and the batteries can then charge at nighttime. All right, coming up in the basement, my boy's sleeping right now. I had to make a coffee, but I didn't want to wake him. So I, I actually grind the beans before he went to bed. Dad trick right there. All right, the Pushmatic panel is out. So up next, I'm planning two big upgrades for the house. One, a new heat pump hot water heater, and also a DIY battery backup system that we're gonna install in the garage. If this video helped you, or if you're concerned about your electrical panel, please comment below. Also, don't forget, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.